<clears throat> Greetings, beautiful people. Welcome back to the True Health Forever podcast, where we try to live our best life through the lens of holistic health. I'm one of your hosts, Devon Travell, creator of Black Wall Street, the board game. And as usual, I have the melanated, hey. the coding, hey. the curlrific hey. queen herself. <laughs> what up? Introduce yourself to the folks. <laughs> What's up, party people? Every time. <laughs> My name is Sinclair, aka the health, health nerd. nerd. And uh, yeah, here again on a lovely Sunday evening. I was gonna say afternoon, yeah. it's, it's evening now. We've been grinding all day. All day. Working on the weekend, as, as usual. usual. Uh, way up in the deep end, like as usual. usual. Yeah. All right, anyway, so today we are going to finish the vision episode. Hopefully, y'all had an opportunity to check out the Vision episode, part one. That's good stuff. Definitely premiere episode so far. A lot of good vision talk, a lot of good motivational talk. Obviously, went through our personal visions through True Health Forever and the various other things that we're working on. But the queen was dropping nuggets left and right. I was mm-hmm. dropping a nugget or two, you know what I'm saying? So, we're going to finish off that episode or that vision with the part two. Because we had two more pillars of True Health Forever to still talk about. And then, you know, as usual, we may have some uh, some tangents. Some, <laughs> one, or, uh, one or five. One or five asides, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> but let's get into it. So... First two pillars of True Health Forever were physical health and economic health. Yep. Now, do you want to talk about social health first or spiritual health first? Let's go with social health first. That's on you then, Queen. Uh, Hit us with it. Social health, can you first define it for the folks? Why you think it's important? And then let's get into the vision. So for me, social health is kind of like your relationships. How are you in regards to your environment and the people around you? Um, so your family, your friends, your coworkers, your partner, your husband, your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your mm. whoever. Um, what are you? What are your relationships in your life like? Do you feel connected to the people around you? You know, um, I've mentioned before in other podcasts, but we just as human beings, we are collaborative beings. Mm. So we are built and meant to collaborate on other you know other things we used to be cave people you know hunting and gathering together you know we, we, we didn't travel alone if you traveled alone you were dead right because you were probably eaten by a pack of wolves or something i don't know goodness <laughs> goodness <laughs> but we suck together so that's why we are we like we literally vibe off of each other like mm-hmm. if you like i don't know if you've heard like women um, women will like their menstrual cycles so will start to get syn- synced. Mm-hmm. Synced is that the? You know I'm not the grammar sunk? person. Whichever. Yeah, don't, don't ask me. We'll Sorry, Miss Franklin. Sync- <laughs> we'll start to sync up because like we are literally connected just with being next to each other. We're not even like physically touching. Like there are vibrations and things that you 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 feel off of each other. Right. Um, that's why like I think like vibes and auras those are such a thing. Yeah. Like I feel like you you really feel a person's energies. Um, we did something the other day. So every person has a vibe, every person has an energy. Kind of similar to, on, I know y'all used to do this. Sinclair, <laughs> let me know if you used to do this. The mood rings. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so people used to get mood rings, put the mood ring on, and it would be like, oh, you're angry right now, so it's <laughs> red. Or when you're sad, oh, you're sad, so the ring turned blue. Mm-hmm. I think each person also has their natural frequency or their natural color. And we did an experiment. We were all on the balcony just chilling one day. And I was like, Sinclair, what do you think your natural color is? Mm -hmm. And, like, we we both closed our eyes. We both looked at each other in the dark with our eyes closed, just looking at where we were and trying to sense what the color was. Mm -hmm. And, I I mean, I'm forgetting what it was right now. But you said a color. And I think it was, like, a a light purple, like a lavender type color. Mm -hmm. You were like, I feel like my vibes are lavender. And I was like, I literally see you as lavender right now. Wow. It was it was really dope. So, again, this is a, a side or tangent number one of many. But I think each person, like you said, does have a 
a frequency or mm-hmm. a, a color that represents who they are. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I think that's why social health is so important because we're, we, we're not siloed, you know, individual beings. We interact with each other on a daily basis and just to go about life. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the ways that we currently and plan to do in the future, going oh, yeah, to that go, later. We build on, oh, yeah, oh, yeah we're going to build on this <laughs> bad boy right here. <laughs> so I'm very excited for this one. Okay, man. Um, but one of the ways that we currently kind of... Um, I'm gonna say, try to improve our social health is by putting ourselves into situations that we're not familiar with, mm. aka traveling. Yeah. So we love to travel. We always take multiple trips every year. We try and make one international. This year is probably the first year that that's not going to happen. Mm. Although technically, at the beginning of the year, we were we were else. Yeah. in Amsterdam mm-hmm. and then Paris. Yes, ma'am. And then London when we came back. So technically, we did. We were international, but we were supposed to take an international trip. We were actually supposed to be in Costa Rica a few Bruh. weeks ago, yeah. um, but uh, you know, COVID happened. So the vids, the vids, come on, the vids, vids, as my mother called them. <laughs> um, but yeah, so traveling is amazing because one, you get to meet people you've never met before, mm-hmm. and it always happens that like you get to talk with the, the native people or wherever you're going, um, which is amazing. So like. My, honestly, my favorite people would probably be Italian people. Um, you, Sinclair, <laughs> you're always okay. So they're just really nice. Well, why are you and, yelling? Why, 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 you, why are you yelling? That's why. <laughs> what's up? They're really nice, and <laughs> so they basically in tell Ita- the truth. In, in Italian, tell the truth. In Italian, beautiful is Bella. Uh-huh. And so there were several instances where, you know, people would just be like, oh, you know, hey, hey, hey you know, just walking by, they'd be like, oh, Bella, Bella, Bella. And it was, but it would be like random people, like, I, not, not people I know, but it's just like, that's so nice that you, like, I feel like it would be weird if in America, if you were, like, walking by and someone, like, I feel like it would be creepy. Like, and then someone was like, oh, hey, beautiful. You know, I feel like it seems like, like almost like hitting on or something. I don't know. But it's, it, I feel like it's not definitely not as normalized as it was over there. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't feel like creepy at all. Huh. Um, it was just in a very like. That is interesting, though. Because, yeah. yeah, I can I can definitely sense how like in America, if you're walking down or if we're on a, a tour and people are just like, oh, you're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. It's like, mm, what do you want? Right. But yeah, it was definitely less stressful. In it America. felt natural. It was just yeah. nice. Um, but also uh, in Thailand, everybody was super nice too. Mm-hmm. Um, but you get to meet, you get to meet people, you get to meet cultures, you get to. Go ahead. So yeah, quick, quick little interjection. So one, I find that it's very interesting and obviously makes sense why you love Italy because everyone's calling you beautiful and it was a emotional, emotionally enriching experience. Mm-hmm. The fact that you can go to another place and just random people that you don't know are pouring into your self-esteem cup. Like, oh, you're so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Yes, yes, yes. So I think your experience on where you go will determine if you go there again and how much mm-hmm. you travel later on. Deep. So I think it's very important to be strategic about, especially if you this is like your first international trip, be strategic about where you're going. Don't go to yeah, don't don't go to France for your first one there. M- much love to Paris and people in France, but yeah, it, w- it was an interesting experience. They don't really like us Americans too they, much. And they don't like Americans. Um, but you want to make sure you have positive experiences when you travel because that will reinforce you wanting to travel again, just like Absolutely. anything else. Like, if you have a positive experience, you're going to want to do that thing again. So I think, yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you get to, and we always like to take some type of like nice cultural tour wherever we go so that Mm -hmm. we are learning about the culture. We're learning about the people. Mm -hmm. The tour we did in Bangkok was amazing. We got to go to the temples. We got to go to the street mark and the street fair. Mm -hmm. Um, and we got to go on the river. We got to hear the full name of Bangkok, which is actually a a, song. A full on song. It was, it was amazing. It was like, I would have never known. I never heard of that. You know, it's been in so many movies and all these things that I would have never known that without that experience um so yeah i think that traveling is is one just amazing that for everybody to do even whether you can do it locally you know take a drive take a road trip somewhere just go get out of your current situation every now and then it's good to put yourself in an uncomfortable situation safe but uncomfortable (laughs) um so i know one of the ways that we want to definitely continue and magnify that in the future is to do th4 retreats um, TH4, gang, gang, come with it. Okay. Holistic health, come on now. Eh, eh, eh. 
Uh, so these would be very holistic retreats where we go to a foreign place where we try their food, we get to explore their culture, we get to do some fun excursions. That's always a big part of it too. Mm-hmm. Get to do some excursions and then get to do a little bit of soul searching, a little bit mm-hmm. of you know how am I doing, mm-hmm. you know health wise. What are my goals? What am I trying to do for my future? And really kind of, you know, create a vision for yourself. So mm-hmm. we really want people to leave those retreats because every time we come back from a trip, we feel great. Yes. Great. Just rejuvenated. Yeah. Oh, there we go. I was about to make up a different word. <laughs> feel very rejuvenated when we come back. We always, we talk about usually our goals and mm-hmm. our promises before we leave. Mm-hmm. So like maybe on the plane or a few days before, we'll talk about, okay, what do we want to do? What do we want to change? What promises do we want to say to ourselves for 2021, 2020? And then during the retreat talk about it briefly not a whole lot but then when we come back we're like full-fledged right. let's get it right it'll let it kind of like it sets you up in the right mindset and then you, you get put yourself outside of your current situation mm-hmm. and that allows it just it's just a little break it's a little break from your normal life mm-hmm. and that for me is very important just because then when I get back then it's like grind time it's like okay mm-hmm. now I feel good I feel refreshed and I feel like I'm ready to go um, and that's something that even now, like without having any type of vacation, we would have normally taken probably a weekend vacation and mm. an international vacation right now. I'm like feeling antsy. I'm like, <laughs> all right, I, I, need need a to, I need to get out of this situation for a second. Yeah. Um, so She tired of me, y'all. She no, keeps no, looking no. at me every day. She's like, oh, I'm going to cut your beard off in the nighttime. <laughs> Ooh, sick. No. <laughs> That's not, that's not what you think. Nobody ever been that angry okay. with you. That's foul. Okay, oh, good. Jeez. Yeah, thank uh, you. I've been working hard on this bad boy. Um, <laughs> something else that we're trying to slightly change in the future for the TH4 experiences is we want to make sure we're bringing a group of people. Mm-hmm. They don't necessarily have to be people we know, but that is an added bonus. Because if they're people that we know, we can now start to think about how we can build together. Mm -hmm. So I think before, and we've had friends come on a few of the trips that we've done, but they haven't had the soul searching part of it per se, formally. I always ask people questions about the future because that's the type of person that I am. Like, hey, what are the goals? Hey, what are you investing in this year? Hey, you trying to start a business? Hey, three years ago you said you wanted to start a business. What's up with that? That's my small talk best accountability partner because he's like uh on april 22nd of 2010 you mentioned you might have mentioned that you wanted to do this how's that going yeah that's just what i do so we've done that informally but what i'm excited for even at the end of this year is we're going to kind of try to build a formal curriculum or agenda if it's uh, if i don't like using the word agenda for vacation but itinerary itinerary there we go thank you fancy word person okay. we're gonna try to have a itinerary where it's like okay day one what are your goals or promises for 2021 day two what do you feel like is your superpower mm-hmm. day three how can you begin to make money off of your superpower and then day four how can you build your avengers team so if you have one superpower how can you work with Sinclair, how can you work with Vern? How can you work with Daniel, Javon, all these great people? How can you work with other people that have complementary superpowers to you Mm -hmm. to create a better future? So I'm very excited for that extra piece. Like not only is it gonna be fun, not only we're gonna have great food, some turnt nights, of course, but I think it'd be cool to start building internal networks where it's like we're all helping each other grow. Right. Right. Yeah, I feel like that's that's the first step. If I know your goal, then I'm gonna help you try to get there. Right. Um, and if you know my goals, same thing. So if we have a group of people who all know each other's goals and want to move as a pack, like mm. you're gonna get there even faster. Right. If you wanna go slow, no, if you wanna go fast. Damn.